Alright. We've got uh, Nashua. Yeah, he got it this time. Uh, floppy disk. It's a five and a quarter inch. Um, these were commonly used from the, you know, around about the 80s and all that sort of thing. Um, you had uh, your early Apple IIs used them. Um, the early PCs used them. Um, they were using quite a few things before they were replaced by the three and a half inch. Um, kind of gone these days. The last computers to really come with them were uh, early 486s. Um, Compaq, I believe it was, had the combination slimline five and a quarter inch and three and a half inch click in, click out arrangement. They were pretty cool. Um, generally these were designated the B drive, uh, while the three and a half inch were designated the A drive, uh, when you had two of them. Um, I mean, they can be either or, depending on where they were at the end of the floppy drive cable, but, um, yeah, they were, you, you know, you, you notice all your hard drives start at C drive, uh, in PCs, and it's because A and B were already taken. Um, recently you've started to be able to use A and B for different things like map drives and things like that. Um, but that wasn't, and still isn't a common thing. So, generally when you're talking hard drives, you've got C drive through to Z. And I don't know what happens after Z. Um, but anyway. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at this one. Um, we're going to pull it apart. Uh, I've got no use for it, got, don't have any drives for it, so, um... Basically, it's of no value, so I'm just going to pull it apart and show you what's in it. Um, generally, they come in this sort of jacket arrangement. Um, you know, nothing too flash, but it seemed to work. It's just a dust cover because magnetic media has no fixed or built in uh, dust cover or anything like that, uh, unlike your three and a half inch. Uh, floppy disks and above where you had a metal flip uh, that can slide across and done, you know, kept it all self-contained. These generally always had a slip to go into, sort of like an old 45 record, you know, you always had the slip for it. Um, yeah, so let's go into a few details with these disks. In the uh, earlier systems, like the Apple II and that, um, they wrote onto these one side at a time, they only had one head uh, instead of two. So what you would commonly see is uh, you'd write to the disc on one side, when you're finished, you take it out, flip it over, and use the other side. And that's how they did it. Um, the PCs are pretty much, well, from the 360K drives um, and the 1.2 meg drives, um, they all had two sets of heads. First thing you'll notice is the Ruptect notch. Um, these would, well, they came factory punched out on the one side. See, there's none here. Um, and a, a paper slip with little stickers that you would put over it to cover it so that you couldn't uh, write to it. Which is kind of funny. Um, so your Ruptect was adding something, not removing something like every other um, media device since, pretty much. So you, say for your audio cassettes, you had these tabs here. That tab is still there because I can write to it. If I take it away, I won't be able to write to it. The five and a quarter inch disc is reversed. That means I can write to it. That means I can't. So, what you, what they used to do, and they probably still do on some older machines, is you would buy, you know, talking your single-sided drives. You'd buy a set of these, um, and the first thing you'd do is turn it over and put a notch here. And then you could write to two sides of that disc. Um, so it was like a little punch. Punch it out. Anyway, so you've got a few things here. You've got a couple of locators when it goes into the drive. You've got the opening that the head runs back and forth on to access it. Um, you've got this little ring here, but it's supposed to 
uh, designate something, but it was always either there or not. You know, you never. I don't think it was really followed, but I believe having it there meant it was a high density disc or something like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but um, if you turn the actual media around, it'll let me. It's a bit stiff. Let's see if we can do it. Da -da -da. a hole and it didn't serve um, any other purpose but to tell the drive this is uh, the reference point uh, as the disc spins around inside the unit every time it goes past here the drive knew that was the start point and sort of went from there it's more more an alignment or a um, um, you know, for setting it up so it knew where it was. Because all, all, all the motors were, um, I believe they were stepper motors. So when it turned, it counted every rotation from this dot. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull it apart and have a look inside. So, we need to open it from this side. We've got these seams. What we'll do, we'll just start. You can use a knife, but I'm not too worried about it. Just start. Pulling it, these off. Mm. Oh, nothing there. Okay. Open it up. And that is a magnetic media. And this is why they were called floppy disks, because they're floppy. They're quite very, 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 very flexible. Um, your three and a half inch floppy disks were called by some people as uh, hard disks because they were in a shell that was rigid, but they weren't. They were still floppy disks. They still had a very highly flexible, um, I believe it's mylar. Um, the disc inside, and yeah, so there were, there were still floppy discs because they were floppy. Um, and on that basis, the uh, zip drive, uh, the iMega zip drive, is still a floppy drive uh, because the disc is floppy, it's flexible. Um, hard discs are generally, or should be, the ones that are on a metal disc and you can't bend them. If you bend them, they'd snap. Um, you know, that's a hard disk, that's floppy. So, inside here you've got the magnetic media. You've got um, these pads here, which um, serve a couple of purposes. One's to help keep the dust off the disk, because they do collect a lot of dust. The other is just fric it's friction. It, um, it's very slippy. It's very slippery, you know, on the disk media. It, it doesn't grip to it at all. Um, it just allows the disc to spin inside here without scratching it or heating it or whatever. And just allows it to run smoothly uh, in the drive. So, you've got inside a floppy disk, you've got two of those, you've got one of those, and you've got that. And that's it. Cool. No worries.